We're here at Oshkosh. We're down in the Elkalite area, and I'm talking with James Weeby of Be Light Aircraft. I'm Dan Johnson, and we're going to have a look at a seaplane that's new to us. But we saw some floats before a four that you intended to put on an airplane. At that time, they weren't on one. And these don't look anything at all like that. What happened, James? Well, what happened was uh, basically we got uh, we had a strong desire to try and do an even lighter float that would be easier to build. And you had uh, a lot of build time in that one. Yeah, it looked like. there a lot of rivets, thousands of rivets. Yeah. So it was it was looking to be a great float. And uh, but we backed up and then moved forward again. We ended up with a float here made out of carbon fiber and foam. Solid and carbon fiber. It is actually a hollow core foam. I mean, covered, I mean all all carbon fiber. Yeah, hundred percent carbon fiber over, over just foam. Over foam. Okay. That's right. So back in the early days uh, of ultralight flying yeah. and floats, we had literal foam floats with a little piece of metal on the bottom. You know, they really worked quite well. Yes. They weren't very durable. Though. Yeah. That was the yeah. big problem for them. Is that sort of what we got here, except in a more durable form? Far more durable. You have a, you have this foam structure that's been wet laid up with the carbon fiber. It uses single, double, or more layers of carbon fiber in the critical spots. It ends up being a lot stronger. I mean, off the shelf, it is just amazingly strong. And the white weight. Because of the fact that we used a hollow foam construction, we ended up with a weight of about 20 pounds wow. a float. Which is, wow. That is now, these are straight number. floats on here, are they? Well, okay, they've got wheel wells in them, but wheels not installed. Okay, so, so you're ready to make yeah, these amphibs. We're going to go amphib Just all not the all the way done to the yet, and therefore this hasn't been in the water. And that's yet. another reason why we wanted to work harder on the weight. We okay. were not liking how the weight numbers were turning out, and we wanted to have a lighter solution so we could do full amphib floats. Yeah, you know, everybody wants amphib, I understand that. Why not? Why not have land and water capability at the same time if you're going to do it? But yeah, I don't know very many that don't get kind of heavy because you got to have the right mechanisms and strength in yep. there. I know. So you're kind of cutting through the slack here with a heavy use of carbon fiber. There's not an awful lot of people that are comfortable using carbon fiber. You've been acquiring this skill for a while now. Yeah, I've been working with carbon fiber, uh, you know, for, I don't know, four years now. And uh, we've been working and learning about it the real way, which is to do it, use it, see it, test it, see what happens. So uh, we've, uh, we've, we've made significant progress on how to do light carbon fiber structures. Well, you've been doing a lot with a lot of different kinds of structures. I'm looking over the cameraman's shoulder here at the uh, uh, Ultra Cub that we looked at yeah. down in Florida. Mostly aluminum. I don't yeah. see hardly any carbon fiber on that's that. True. One. So that's true. That's all aluminum. You're a multi-material kind of guy, I guess. What? But uh, this stuff attracts people's attention because it looks high tech and yeah. modern and all those kinds of values that some people put a high price tag on. Yeah. Um, if you can do this as light as you're talking about, and given the ultralight numbers that allow a Fair allowance yeah. for floats and spots pair. and all that. Um, can you make this uh, legal ultralight? Absolutely. Can Constantly. you do that with this engine? Yes, sir. All right, so all talk right. to me a little bit more yeah, about how you're achieving the numbers. That. First of all, the FAA gives us 60 pounds for the floats and they give us 24 pounds for a parachute. Right. And we're going to take advantage of both of that. So as I so, recall, that gets you up to about 304 pounds total or something. 338. 338, is that what 338. Okay. On straight floats, we're going to deliver yes, you're right. the, this plane will come in at around 300 even. Okay. And in amphib mode, it's going to come in at about 330. Okay. So you can keep it under, even in amphib, yep. even with a fairly powerful engine. Quite a powerful engine. Yeah, 50, 50 horse, horse, right? Firing. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, that, and that should make a, a, such a light aircraft uh, perform quite well on the water. Yes. Yeah, we're expecting this to just be game changing. Now, looking, you know, I've, I've got my eyes kind of focused on the, the attractive black carbon fiber here, but as I just cast my eyes back, I'm seeing there's all that aluminum work that we saw before. Uh, you got it painted white now so we can tell it very easily from the red that surrounds it in, in fabric material. Uh, what's What do you expect the total weight of this package to be with, yeah, this is a pretty true composite here. Carbon fiber, aluminum, fabric, you, got, you got it all on there. Carbon fiber wings. Oh, you're using carbon fiber wings. Look at the lift struts. You can see them. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Carbon fiber lift struts, carbon fiber spars. When I we first put, met you, you yeah. were doing carbon fiber then. No. Then you kind of went back and did some other stuff for a while, but now you're back to carbon fiber. You brought up multiple materials, and I've really adopted the philosophy that each kind of material is best for a particular kind of application. If you want to have a wing structure that's light, you have to use carbon fiber. If you want to have a fuselage structure that's light, really, truly, aluminum is the best way to go. 
you want to have a float, it's going to be carbon fiber. If you want to have a landing gear, well, this is, you know, the best way to go in landing gear is usually steel. So every material has its place. And this plane, we've used the right material in every spot so that the total package is the strongest with the lightest weight. Well, I have to ask you if you found a way to work any wood into the picture. Yes, that's about all you're lacking. Look, well, there is wood in the airplane. <laughs> all the right, so steel, carbon fiber, aluminum, wood. Uh, what else? Foam. Uh, I think I left something out there, yeah. but uh, pretty much every material I've ever known to exist on an airplane, you got it on this one. And so we're talking a legal Part 103 amphibious float plane with 50 horsepower. Yes, sir. And does this have electric start as well? Absolutely, yeah. You know, you're beginning to get right up there with, well, what else could you possibly want kind of thing. That probably means some instrumentation, and yeah. you kind of got to know a thing or yeah. two about yeah, lightweight instruments yeah, too. So, so you can probably load this airplane up with pretty much everything somebody wants, and keep it 103. Which I've got to review this for people. No medical, no pilot's license, some training. Of course, you'll ask yeah. for. We're strong. No FAA training. registration, and buy it ready to fly. Yes, sir. That's a terrific package. It's a lot of information here about it, and you've got so much going on at B-Light and the electronics company as well. We just gotta throw people back to the web now and say, you gotta go explore more and find out how this project progresses and so on. Where do we go find you on the web? B-Light Aircraft, B-E-L-I-T-E, -E, aircraft.com. All right, the C-Light, B-Light, C-Light, D-Light. Oh no, yeah. Somebody coined a phrase out here. I kind of like it. It's a great way to do it. We've been talking with James Weavey. I'm Dan Johnson. You can find more about the work that James done in the past as well as a lot of other information about light aircraft, light sport aircraft, on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us down here in the ultralight area of Air Venture Oshkosh.